My name is Kyle Charlet. I'm a senior technical staff member in IMS, and I'm going to talk to you today about the IMS Open Database. So in version 11 of, of, of IMS, so the Open Database line item was introduced. Um, it addressed two significant bottlenecks in our IMS client base, and that was connectivity and programmatic access. So when it comes to connectivity, right, IMS database is a mainframe-based database. It's not runs on distributed platforms at all. And so as a result of that, the data stored in IMS was historically grounded to the mainframe. There was no real you know, easy and straightforward intuitive ways to get at that data. Um, there was no easy way to access that data and pull it, pull it off the mainframe into, into, into the, the, the open systems uh, space. Um, so Open Database addresses that connectivity issue. Um, uh, the second issue is programmatic access. Uh, it's very difficult to programmatically access IMS databases. Certainly there's the DL1 programming language um, that's proprietary to IMS. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not known to the world. We're not going to be able to teach every tool on the planet how to speak DL1. So we had to address both of those both of those issues, and so as a result, we've opened up the uh, and introduced the IMS Universal Drivers. Um, these Universal Drivers address both of those needs. Um, so on a connectivity standpoint, we have uh, we've TCP/IP enabled access to the to the IMS subsystem. So given a TCP/IP stack anywhere, we can now leverage our Universal Drivers to to leverage that 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 protocol, and come in and access your IMS data off platform. Um, and so we've introduced three universal drivers. We have our universal JDBC driver, our universal DL1 driver, and our universal database resource adapter. The idea behind all of this was to have these drivers be a very um, uh, exhaustive uh, way from several different environments to access your IMS. So universal database resource adapter, that's targeted for uh, Java EE runtimes, so specifically Web3 application server either for Linux, Unix, Windows, or for Linux or on ZOS. Um, so we adhere to the JCA 1.5 specification, which means you can use the common client interface or the CCI programming model, or what is really more desirable for our customer set is use JDBC um, and SQL. Um, uh, as well, our universal, universal JDBC drivers, those can run obviously within a servlet or JSP page or within WAS, but they're also meant for a standalone JVM anywhere. So you can run in CICS address space, an IMS dependent region, you can run in DB2 store procedure, you can run in just a standalone uh, JRE on your laptop and use our universal JDBC driver to come in and access your IMS data using SQL. Um, what JDBC also gives us direct inspection into IMS data now um, for tooling purposes. Um, JDBC also um, introduces enterprise uh, uh, metadata exchange and so it becomes very important for tools uh, to do modeling and just to understand uh, your, your enterprise assets. So we've also um, recognized the fact that JDBC and SQL, while they're industry standards, while they're very nice and easy to use and very intuitive, um, DL1 is still a major component of IMS and so we did introduce a universal DL1 driver. Uh, what that driver does is it offers uh, DL1 semantics, but abstracted a layer, several layers up into Java, right? So we have, um, it's really an object-oriented programming style. We have objects that, that represent segment search arguments as an example. So you manipulate those objects under the covers or drivers are responsible for translating those, those, that Java framework or those Java objects into the actual DL1 calls that ultimately get sent to IMS. That one of the values of the universal drivers as well is, as I mentioned earlier, they run in both type 4 and type 2 mode. Uh, type 4 means that you can run off platform and open systems. Type 2 means you can run directly on ZOS and go directly to the data without needing to go through uh, or leverage TCP IP. Um, the, the framework that they share is, is a common framework so that applications don't need to be repurposed to run in type 4 or type 2 mode. All you have to do is change the connectivity properties. So the application business logic stays the same. Um, and, and this also doesn't only, uh, or not only does it, does it, does it, um, how does that relate to type 4, type 2, but also the actual container that you're running in. So our drivers, for example, can run in CICS, they can run in IMS dependent regions, they can run in WebSphere. Um, the application itself doesn't need to change based on the deployment characteristics. Um, so our libraries have internal detection protocols or detect the appropriate environment that we're running in and then build the appropriate DL1 calls out of the back end. Um, I guess the net of all this is that from a business growth perspective, um, these drivers are allowing more and more flexibility to meet growth challenges and to access IMS assets. It's becoming more and more um, 
uh, it's, it's more and more necessary for many of our customers to be able to leverage their IMS assets in an open systems environment and in an integrated environment. And previous to Open Database, it was very difficult to do that. And so that's really what, what Open Database offers. And that's all I have. So, uh,